everybody, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Back at you with another floss tube. Gonna get you caught up on um, the stressfulness of our lives. <laughs> that should be the name of a new soap opera, right? Forget days of our lives, let's do stress of our lives. Um, and then what I've been doing this, this week, I kind of stopped doing the daily waiting for orders. At this point, um, well, the news we got last Friday kind of took the wind out of my sails in a big way. Um, the stress is too much, and um, at this point, we may be waiting another week, and I just didn't feel like doing that many new starts. I know, gasp, right? Um, okay, so what happened? Those of you that follow my Facebook group and my Facebook page have already seen this. Um, so Mike did get approved for the PCS. We heard back from the HR at headquarters um, that he was approved. However, dot, 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 because he is curtailing under two years of his assignment, the rules say that um, we have to pay for the move. We don't get any entitlements. We don't get any um, temporary quarters entitlements. Um, they don't pay for shipping the vehicle, shipping our household goods, it's all on us. And that was a huge blow. It's not an inconsiderable amount of money, <laughs> as you can imagine, to ship that kind of stuff out to the remotest island chain in the world. Um, so we started thinking, you know, what do we need to get rid of? We were already planning on selling the Jeep here um, and buying a newer one back in the mainland, the one we have is a 2008, and it's um, it's time to upgrade a little bit. We also wanna get one that's more um, overlanding friendly, a Rubicon rather than a Wrangler. So anyway, we'd already had that on our, our radar, but then we started thinking, do we have to get rid of furniture? Does it make sense to get rid of furniture? Are we saving any money weight-wise, cost-wise? if we have to buy new furniture, you know, in San Antonio. Mike decided also, we heard from um, the gaining organization that, um, you know, they had sent a message to HR justifying the move mission-wise. You know, this isn't just something we're doing on a lark. It's, it's mission, um, there's a mission priority involved. There's a financial, um, aspect to it. There's a health aspect. There's a um, being closer to Mike's family, to Mike's parents is, you know, they're getting up there and he's an only child, you know, so there are all those things, but the rules say under two years you pay. Well, Mike is appealing, asking them that at least for the time that he has been here and that he has done exemplary work, um, if they could at least pay the household goods the shipment. Um, so we are once again in waiting mode, waiting to hear back on that. Mike is actually home today. He did not sleep last night because of various reasons. So um, yeah, we're back to waiting. Now, on a positive note, we did go ahead and make an appointment with the movers, the people that the, the government does contract with to move their people here. And they are gonna be coming out on the 24th to do a survey of the, the goods we have in the apartment to give us a quote on what it will cost. Um, if we he do hear back from HR that they are willing to pick up that cost, then we're hoping that that date can stand since we already have it scheduled. When they come on the 24th, they'll give us a quote and then they'll give us a date for the actual pack out, which will happen the following week. So. I think regardless of HR's decision, we will be packing out the last week of March. So that is a, a positive move forward. Um, I guess there's only so long you can worry about it when there's nothing you can do about it. So we're just kind of taking it day by day. Every day we're hoping Mike gets an email. We have a feeling he got put down back at the bottom of the queue for the review. Um, it is what it is at this point. So. But no more new start every day. Although I do have two new starts happening this week. So <laughs> more on that later. That's for my birthday. I've talked about that already. Um, so having said that, 
I did fall in love with my one new start and that's pretty much what I spent most of the week stitching on. And that is the seasonal bell pull. This is a Nancy Rossi design. This is from a magazine, the Needleworker magazine from 1997, but it is still available on the Cooler Design website. And I will be putting that link below for anybody that might be interested. This is a gorgeous piece. And I think one of the reasons I'm really enjoying it is because I'm working on spring up here and spring is my favorite season. I don't know how I'll feel about it when I get down into all those greens there with the apples just starting to come out but um, it's, it's a gorgeous piece. So, this is what I have done so far. This is Tycho. You can probably hear Nina scratching on the blind downstairs. <laughs> She's a little wild kitty right now, apparently. So anyways, um, I do have Mama Bird and little Baby Bird in here now. Got the nest pretty much all put together. I went ahead and did the eyes of the birds are in black. And I went ahead and um, did the back stitching on the bird that was also in black since I had that strand going. So I do have a little bit of the back stitching in. Um, of course, there's a lot more to go. The page one ends, oh, probably down at the bottom of spring down here. That's probably where after, when I get all of page one done, I'll probably do the back stitching for page one before moving on to page two. Now I will say one thing, you know, we do so little back stitching on, on in cross stitch these days that I hadn't really thought about it. I am not real thrilled with how the back stitching, and of course it all blends in with the grays and the blacks in the wing anyway, but back stitching with one strand on 40 count when the stitching itself is one strand it does make it a little bulky and i don't think it has the the delicacy that you often get in back stitching i'm trying to be very aware and make sure that my back stitching kind of gets down in between the stitches more than sitting on top so it's not quite as in your face but anyway I'm very happy with that, and I will be continuing on this until I don't feel like it anymore, basically. Um, the other ones that I had wanted to work on, the Dorothy Allen sampler, the Jane Marshall sampler, and um, the armchair pin keep thingy, those are still in the docket. I decided to concentrate on Dorothy Allen because it is so small, so much lettering, I knew it would get done quicker, quickly. So that is this one. It is by R&R &R Reproductions, one of their first designs, is my understanding. And this behind it. I am almost done with this. So I just have to finish off the numbers 52 here. There's a little motif at the end and then the line of motifs at the bottom. And I will be done with this. I do plan on hem stitching this and mounting it in a frame, like sitting on a linen background, a linen ground, just like it is basically on the, on the model. So when I do the hem stitching, I plan on recording that so that you can see it. I've never, I've never done that before. So that should be interesting. But this is a very sweet little piece. I am really enjoying it. One of the interesting things about this is, um, you know, for the, this is a 35 count linen, came with the kit. It is Avera Soie Silks. And um, there are a few places, for the most part, it is one strand of silk, but every once in a while, it's charted with two strands. And so I don't know whether you can tell there's a thickerness to these yellow, the yellow letters than the blue. And I assume that's what Dorothy herself had done because um, the, the instructions in the pattern do say that they tried to keep it as accurate as the original as possible. The other place where you have that happening is 
the T, the X, and the, the X and the T. So that's two shades of blue blended together. And you can see they're a little bit thicker, kind of pop a little bit more. So anyway, I'll have that done here in another, well, maybe by the end of tonight. I've been, that's really been my focus piece. So I, I plan on getting that done. And that's really all I've been stitching on. It seems to me I'm missing something, but I didn't bring it up here, so oh well. <laughs> the other thing I'm working on again is my um, Ranunculus Bouquet Punch Needle. This is by Michelle Palmer. You can get this on Etsy. I will put a link for this below as well. So I just have the background to do, and you can see I started that yesterday. I actually had started the square, bef the outline of the of this background, the square before, and I want to get this done and out of the hoop um, before we pack, so that I don't have to worry about it being packed in the hoop. I will not fully finish it until we get settled in the house, because this will go in the household goods. Now, one thing that is happening, and I don't know whether you can see this. When I did the punching on the outer border, you can see there are places where you can still see the black from where I um, I drew the, the design. I'm just gonna go around the border again in that color, because you can see it in several different places. So I'm just gonna go around it again on the outside to fill all that in so you can't see it anymore. So another extra line of that color isn't a big deal, won't hurt anything. So I hope to get that done this week as well. Um, yeah, not much. Birthday starts, that is coming on Thursday. I share a birthday with Teresa Vanette, Kitten Stitcher, how cool is that? Um, so I do have the Serenity that I'm starting. That's the blue, all the turquoises, right? The Northern Expressions Needlework. And then um, this one, BG1874. Now, I meant to pull this up and I forgot, so hold please. All right, so I, I spent some time this week um, Pulling from the silk floss I have for Mrs. Sadis, from Mrs. Sadis, for I have three colors that are called for. I wanted to get as much as I could using Raquel's floss, but there are some colors that she just didn't have um, equivalents for. And what I did is I kind of looked on one, two, three stitch, I would pull up the color, and of course it's hard to really tell the color on the monitor anyway, but I tried to get an idea of what the color was by looking on one, two, three stitch, and then going through my, my silks from Raquel and seeing you know if I had something that was close. And there was just some that I, I didn't have. Now, as always, the picture does not do it justice. But when I looked at these colors, they look very much to be tanny, taupey, brownie type colors, right? When I pull the colors up on one, two, three stitch, they're definitely two shades of green. Luckily, I looked on um, the Samplers Not Forgotten, who is the designer of this Facebook page, and she has, whoops, where'd it go? Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> this photo. Now, forgive the glare. So this is somebody who is in the process of stitching it, and you can see, yes, hold on, let me, let me switch this here. That is indeed two shades of green. So, and of course, it comes to life when you're stitching it much more than what you see in the picture. Now, having said that, um, I'm gonna wait until I get to San Antonio to get the shades that I'm missing. My understanding is that Stitches from the Heart, the cross-stitch store in San Antonio, has a very wide selection of um, different types of, of floss, of threads. 
I think what I need is um, NPI and um, Gloriana maybe. So hopefully they will have those. If not, I know there's some needlepoint stores in San Antonio as well. And then I can always order them if, if I can't find them anyplace else. But um, having said that, I'm going to be starting up in the top left anyways and working on this alphabet for a long time. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, not having all, all the floss just yet. Interesting thing about this pattern though, let me go ahead and take it out, the picture out of the, um, whether I can, I can probably show it easier on here. Um, do you see these two long blue lines stretching the whole way across and the whole way across here? Those are actually drawn thread parts. So you pull out, I don't recall exactly from the pattern, but you pull out some of the linen threads, and I don't remember how many, and then weave back in a one of the silk threads. But the interesting thing is you have to get that done before you can do like this middle line coming down because that's stitched over it and the wreath is stitched over top of that area. So, very cool. I've never done that before. I'm really looking forward to that. And I was thrilled to find that picture on the web, on their Facebook page. Um, okay, so I do plan on trying live videos for my two starts on my birthday. I've never done a live video before on YouTube. Um, I don't think it's that hard. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna schedule them, but I don't know for sure what time. <laughs> so I can't really tell you right now, but I will post it all the different places. So hopefully you will see it. I'm thinking like 10 a.m. my time for Serenity. Um, so 10, 11, and of course with daylight savings time now, everything's changed. Hawaii doesn't change. Um, we don't do daylight savings time here. So the rest of the country switches back and forth and I have to figure it out. So it's now six hour time difference between us and the East Coast. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. across the country. Um, so yeah, probably 10-ish for the one and two-ish for the other, something like that. I won't be on real long, but the idea with the live video is that because it's live, you, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be chatting with me. You'll be, I think, typing, right, your chats, and I can respond to your comments in real time. So I think that's pretty cool. I wanna give that a try. Um, so yeah, let's say 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. my time. I do plan on stitching on each one for a chunk of time. Um, we will be going out to dinner for, I guess, are we going out to dinner that night, Mike, or should we wait till the weekend? What, for your birthday? Yeah. What's whatever you want to do, man? It's whatever I want to do. <laughs> What I want to do is King Crab Legs at Haleiwa Joe's on the North Shore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll probably go out to dinner that night, depending on how Mike feels after work. Who knows? Maybe we'll get good news on my birthday. That would be an awesome birthday present, wouldn't it? All right, so there's that. Um, market. OMG, market. You know, as much as last year, there wasn't a whole lot that thrilled me. This year, like everything's thrilling me <laughs> because I apparently don't have enough to do, right? Um, so I did pre-order the ones from Teresa Kogut and I ordered them from Gulf Coast Stitches. So, you know, I'll get them when I get them. Hopefully she'll ship them before I move. <laughs> that gives her till the end of the month. I think we'll be okay. Um, I came close to ordering some other ones, but I'm gonna wait. I'll probably get them from Stitches from the Heart, um, kind of make my introduction to that shop with a bang. <laughs> but the ones that I have to have. So this is also Samplers Not Forgotten, and this is what actually brought me to their Facebook page. This is their new French Garden Sampler. Um, this, I haven't actually seen this 
written down or said anywhere, but I leave, believe this is a companion piece to the English Garden Sampler that I started a few weeks ago. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's a must have. This one by Hands to Work. This is called Ida Nolt. How cool is that? As always, I like different things. Big wonky flowers, cool cherries, gorgeous border. And then there's several Brenda Gervais. On my salt box kick, this is the Baltimore salt, salt box because of course we did live in the Baltimore area for 25 plus two years. So <laughs> I don't consider myself a Baltimorean, but um, I've spent most of my adult life there. Salt box quilt sampler. And no, I am not a Ravens fan. I love this one. I think this is striking. So that will come home with me at some point. And then the token of love, because look at all those blues and browns. Is that a perfect color for me? Oh, oh that's so pretty. So, do you have a market must have? Do you have multiple market must-haves? I think you probably do. Um, all right, a little bit of a shop update and then, well, let's do haul first. I don't have very much haul. In fact, um, pretty much nothing that I've bought myself, <laughs> which is good, right? Um, so the, the wooden grime guard, the wooden clasp thingy that um, I use pretty much all the time now, stitching in hand. I have recommended her many times on my videos. A lot of people have asked me about it from my Stitch With Me videos when I'm using it and I haven't mentioned it. I have linked to the shop many times. Um, and I think many of you must have bought many times because she sent me a gift with my initials engraved in it. How awesome is that? This came out of the blue yesterday. Um, little needle minder, leaf needle minder included. Thank you so much. So Wood and Cat, Wood, W-O-O-D and A-N-D, Cat, C-A-T, all run together is the name of the Etsy shop. Daria is her name. Thank you so much, I love it. And I can use a second one, so. Highly recommend them. They are good, you know, not only, let me get my little thingy here. For those who are new, who may not have seen this, if you stitch in hand, they're brilliant. Oops, let's get it turned around so you can actually see my initial. So, if you stitch in hand, it allows you to hold it, hold your piece without touching the fabric. There are magnets in here. So it also acts as a needle minder. I mean, just brilliant. If you're using a Q-snap or a hoop, or a frame, it's equally good for that. Um, now, for the most part, if I'm doing this, I have this on my stand. But if I needed to, I mean, it might not be as applicable when you're holding a, a stand, but holding a hoop, Again, just helps you keep your hand off of the fabric. And this is actually a cloth with little squares. I don't know what it is, whether it is like an Ada, um, an oatmeal Ada or something like that. Um, but you could actually stitch on the cloth if you wanted. But then you'd be touching your needlework, you know? So anyways, highly recommend Daria. Thank you, Daria, Dara, I forget. I have to send her a thank you note. I haven't done that yet. 
So highly recommend. The other thing I got was another package from Fat Quarter Shop. And you can tell, you know, I mentioned last year after Stitch Con that the stores and the designers are seeing an exponential increase in the interest in cross-stitch. And of course, I believe that's continuing. And I think you can really tell it's, in, it's continuing by the way that a shop like the Fat Quarter Shop is really amping up their inventory of cross-stitch products. And, you know, when they first started getting stuff, they pretty much were only carrying the Lori Holt designs. And um, I guess they had DMC and they might've had some of the classic color works to go with the designs. And then they started working with Priscilla and Chelsea and they started carrying Country Cottage Needleworks and Little House Needleworks and hands-on design. And now they're branching out to all kinds of different things. And they're not only just branching out to the designs, but they're starting to carry more fabric and they're starting to carry all of the different um, fibers and they're starting to carry tools and accessories. And so they've sent me a wonderful sampling of things. So finishing tape, this is a double-sided acid-free. So whenever you're mounting your finished piece, on a piece of mat board, you would use this to tape it on the back. Instead of using glue or instead of lacing, you could use this. And I believe this is what, um, or something very similar, is what the frame shop used when they mounted um, my Harbor Haven because they had said they used double-sided acid-free tape. They have this tool, cross-stitch key. So it has the corner thing like I talked about the other day. It does have a ruler. It has an equivalency for the different um, fabric counts and what needle size or is typically used on it. And then one of the fabric um, rulers to try and figure out what, what size fabric you have. And so over here as well. And this is like I showed you the other day. So really, really handy little device and small enough you can just put it in whatever pouch you carry your accessories in. And then they also sent me um, their latest stack of stitch cards. So this is a summer theme. Set D, it says. Each one is 32 by 32, so nice, sweet, small designs. And then they sent me a copy of the Prim Village. They're doing this as a stitch along, so these are more salt boxes with little quilt squares in between. Very, very sweet. And that comes with a little Prim Village keychain. Keychain fob, scissor fob. Take the keychain part off it and make a needle minder of it. All the things. So they sent me two, one for me and one for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that away. Um, I'm gonna make that just for US people. I know, I hate doing that, I really do. Um, but I just have to be really careful with money and, and shipping these days. So, U.S. only. Um, if you're interested in that set from Fat Quarter Shop, please, um, again, don't say giveaway. Just say, I love the Prim Village. And I will do that giveaway next week, next Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be changing my format a little bit. I'm not going to say too much here. In my head, I'm changing my format. I'm hoping it will translate in real life like I, I see it in my head. So I don't wanna to say too much in case it doesn't work out, in case life gets away from me. Um, who knows, right? I just don't know what my life holds these days. But um, I'm thinking about some changes. So next Tuesday, you might see something a little different. We'll just leave it at that. A little bit of shop update and then I'm going to do the giveaway um, or, or announce the winners from last week's for the mesh bags. Narnia. One of my eagle-eyed um, test stitchers, Brenda, found various errors in the pattern and you know it just proves no matter how many times a designer looks over something you always need another set of eyes. To, to look at it, to see it more clearly. So Brenda actually found several different um, errors, ex extra stitches and, and a missing stitch. Um, so I've made those changes. 
I re-uploaded the PDF and I've sent an email out to all of you who purchased it. If you didn't get the email, no worries. All you have to do is go back to my site and log into your account and um, just re-download the, the pattern. Doesn't matter that it, it's not going to say like there's a different version. You just download what's just click on the download link and re-download it. Now this isn't, I know this isn't something, this isn't the way people typically handle errors, errata. And I think a large part of that is because for the most part, designers are still doing paper patterns. So they have a tendency to put errata on their websites or somewhere that people can go and see if there's any problems. I'm kind of taking the, the knitting world approach. As I've mentioned before, I'm only ever going to do PDFs. I have no interest in and no plans of um, ever venturing into the paper pattern world. In the knitting world on Ravelry, if you buy a pattern, you have access to that download. It goes into your library on Ravelry. And um, Ravelry, for those that aren't knitters, is the, the huge worldwide knitting website. And it's where the majority of indie um, and also big name, pretty much anybody that's designing in the knitting world sells their patterns through Ravelry. And so you have a library on Ravelry, and when you purchase a pattern, um, it sits in your library, and you can re-download it as many times as you want. It's yours. You own it. Um, and if a designer ever has to correct anything, add anything, like a lot of times designers will add different translations to their patterns, different languages, you just go and re-download the pattern. So that's kind of the model that I am working on, that you will always have access to that design. And um, if I ever have to make any changes, if I ever add anything, you can just go and, and re-download it and, and the changes will be there. So anyways, um, I was having problems with people getting their password reset emails. Mike and I think I've, we figured it out um, yesterday and fixed that problem. So if you get on and can't remember your passwords, you, you should be able to hit the password reset and get the email and all should be good. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any problems. And always, if you are working on one of my patterns and you see something that you think is an error, let me know. I have I have no ego in this. <laughs> I wouldn't say I have no ego, but I wanna make my patterns as clean as possible. And like I said, you can stare at a pattern for ages and still miss something. So I appreciate it if um, you give me any feedback like that. All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So three bags with little goodies attached. The large mesh bag, so that was this one with the sampler company four little patterns included. We had 65 people interested in that. Number 20, Prudence, and you know, I would pick the person with the most difficult last name. <laughs> Prudence Midzwicky. <laughs> Did I come close at all? N I E D Z W I E C K I. Prudence. You won. I will be commenting on your comment, but also just know for all of the winners, email me at jan at madforyarn.com. Let me know um, that you won. I'll know that you won, but you know, just, I need your mailing address. Email me your mailing address. All right, Prudence, so this one is yours. Medium bag. We had 74 people interested in that, number 65 one, Rhonda Gibbs. So that is this one, the pink bag with the circling angels chart. And then last but not least, the small bag, and this was the most popular one with the, the Bitsy Bob Cutie and the thread keep. We had 118 people interested in that, number 32, Pat Metajek. Metajek. <laughs> you know who you are. Email me with your mailing addresses and I will get these out to you. Um, I think that's it. Except, as always, we end with our angel. Oh, I forgot. I do have one more little goodie. Hold, please. 
my dear friend Michelle. She takes care of me. She makes me happy. She sent me a birthday card. And she sent me another one of Teresa Kogut's angel patterns. So I'm going to have a trio once I get them stitched. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. So pretty. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so angel card. I don't think I need my glasses on for this. I love this one. I wish you would chart this one. Isn't that pretty? Love it. You were born with a purpose that is unique to you. Only you can carry it out. So be you, trust God, and believe in yourself. Amen. Do you know your purpose? I don't know that I know my purpose. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I think that's what most of us do. Anyways, only you can be you though. So I encourage you to be you this week. I think I'm being me. I'm being my best me for the most part. Some days are better than others, right? That's life. All right, guys, I am out. It is getting hot. It's a beautiful Sunday, sunny day here on the island. It hasn't been beautiful and sunny the past few days. That's okay. I like my clouds and rain, keeps it cool. Um, I will see you probably Friday. Well, no, I'll see you Thursday for the, for the live video. So 10 a.m. my time, 2 p.m. my time. We're gonna be doing live on YouTube. We'll see how that works out. Thursday. We'll see you then. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.